Do you know that we are at DEFCON 2, which is one step before complete and total nuclear war? Let's examine the DEFCON ratings and where we are today. DEFCON is the acronym for Defence Condition, or often referred to as the Defence Readiness Condition. This condition rating was developed by the US Joint Chiefs of Staff, JCS, in November of 1959, as a joint readiness system with Canada. There are five DEFCON ratings numbered from five to one, with five being the lowest state of readiness or normal readiness, and one being maximum readiness, with full nuclear war either eminent or already begun. For the record, we have never been to DEFCON 1, but we have come close several times. What do the ratings actually mean? Let's dive into it. 5. Normal readiness. 4. Above normal. Increased intel and security. 3. Increased readiness and air force, ready to mobilise in 15 minutes or less. 2. Next step to nuclear war, armed forces, ready to deploy in less than 6 hours. 1. Imminent nuclear war or already begun. It's a rather slippery slope to reach all-out nuclear war, even with many built-in safety mechanisms to prevent accidentally triggering a DEFCON 1 scenario. The US President and the US Secretary of Defence are the primary individuals that set the overall level, and then the JCS and the various military commanders can further define specific security, activation and response for the personnel under their respective commands. The DEFCON designation is not for the entire world, but rather can be set by different global regions having their own DEFCON levels. This allows a better overall management of crisis instead of looking at it from an all or nothing global scenario. Currently, the DEFCON level in North American, US and Canada regions is at three, meaning that the Air Force is ready to mobilize within 15 minutes. However, Commanders in Europe, Asia and the Middle East are now at DEFCON Level 2, mainly due to the Russia-Ukraine war with the various threats of missile strikes or tactical nuclear weapons being used. The current war in Gaza between Israel and Hamas militants, the increased rhetoric and threats from Iran, as well as tensions with North Korea continuing to test fire dozens of missiles near South Korea and even over Japan, and China's continued threats to unify Taiwan into their country by force if necessary. With so many regions already in a state of DEFCON 2, we should be very worried. These global conditions have raised the stakes to an alarming degree with the top five nuclear nations poised to strike against their enemies. Here's a quick overview of the vast stockpiles of nuclear warheads by just the top five countries. Not surprisingly, these are also the same five countries that make up the Permanent Security Council of the United Nations. Russia, 6,257 warheads. United States, 5,550 warheads. China, 350 warheads. France, 290 warheads. And the United Kingdom, with 225 warheads. And those are just the known numbers of nuclear warheads as it is nearly impossible to really account for all of them. Previously, DEFCON 2 had only been reached during the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1961 when the Strategic Air Command, SAC, was placed on high alert. During the start of the Persian Gulf War of 1991, the JCS placed the US on a DEFCON 2 level. You may be asking, why does this matter? Well, let's look at that further. The two prior instances of DEFCON 2 level happened with mostly one major adversary, the Soviet Union. Today, there are many more nuclear nations with varying degrees of control over their own nuclear arsenals and diplomatic policies. North Korea is generally viewed as a rogue nation with an unpredictable leadership that has consistently pushed closer to war. China also has been aggressively building up its nuclear and military arsenals bankrolled by the world's economic trade with the country. And it continues to demand annexation of Taiwan. Since we have never been to DEFCON 1, we don't know exactly how that level would play out. Would the US make a pre-emptive strike? Would there be a full retaliation? How many nukes would be launched? What would be the short and longer consequences of a full nuclear war? Would the population be completely wiped out? The war in Ukraine has brought us all closer to the possibility of crossing into the DEFCON 1 area, or nuclear war. 
The global tensions are made worse by rhetoric and military actions by North Korea, China, Iran and others. There is no longer a back-channel communication like the US had with the Soviet Union, and instead the US and its allies have increasingly relied on sanctions or other actions that in turn fuel the sabre-rattling. When the US placed sanctions on Japan in the late 1930s, that country was pushed into a corner and opted to attack the US at Pearl Harbor. What happens if Iran or North Korea obtain a nuclear weapon and actually try to use it? Or if a rogue terrorist group obtains one, or a so-called dirty bomb? What are the ramifications of one small country using a nuke to spark greater conflict? Today's world has a greater responsibility because of the proliferation of more than 12,700 nukes around the world. In addition, chemical and biological agents have increased in numbers with equally frightening consequences. What we need to ask ourselves is, at what point is it worth it to go to DEFCON 1? What would be acceptable losses in life? 1 million, 1 billion, 5 billion. The answer to that question is best found in the 1983 movie War Games, where the computer eventually answers with, the only winning move is not to play. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. If you have a topic you would like to see us cover in a future video, then please let us know in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching. Please smash that like button if you found this video informative and consider subscribing and watching other videos on the channel as that helps us grow, which in turn lets us give you more and better videos. Until next time, cheers.